Hello, this Hangout on Air is live. Welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. This taste challenge is the last of the American Blended Whiskey series for now. We'll come back around later, later this year with Bellows American Blended Whiskey. But today we have Bellows Club Whiskey. My friend David tried it yesterday. He was pouring such a big amount. I said, whoa. He said, you want me to pour some back in the bottle? I, I didn't mind how much he drank. I was just like shocked by the amount. He said it was okay. Uh, I guess he gave it a beat. He said, uh, I told him this was a version made by back when it was under a Jim Beam. He said, I can taste a Jim Beam in it. That's the power of suggestion. I don't know. Uh, to me, they it's got too much rye in it. It's like they use old overhauled straight rye whiskey as their uh, straight whiskey. I don't know. It's a strange item. This company, Bellows, was founded in 1830. That they were never really a whiskey producer, but just like Justin Rennie and Brooks, J&B, they were a whiskey broker, buying and selling and handling brands and having people produce it for them. From what I can gather, and even their own advertisements in the magazines indicated that Justin Rennie and Brooks, a wine broker, wine merchant, they call themselves in London. Thousands of, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but just seems like thousands of wine varieties you can buy. Joseph Pesimato says, having some Jack Daniels honey tonight. Oh, I've tried that. I tried that at the distillery in 2017. Okay, so we got the Bellows Club whiskey. I've got a lot left. This was $8.99 for the bottle. It's strange that they could get it so cheap at international market, but I don't ask questions when I go in there. I just buy and get out. And we're going up against Seagram Seven Crown. I have about... 20% of the bottle left, the bottle. They have a new label with the big old seven, but even the Seven Crown website still showing this bottle design on some of their promotionals, but there is a new design. I've seen it at Walmart in the big bottles and the small one. This is a brown bottle. Most of your blended whiskeys are clear. The brown bottle, brown is better because it protects the whiskey from being light damaged. Light can damage it. But you'd probably be okay if it was just on the shelf, unless it was on the top shelf, exposed. This was introduced in 1934 by the Seagram's company, and it has seven crowns. I never could understand seven crowns. And then I realized, oh, it's a menorah. In 1926, I believe Seagram's was bought out by a Jewish family, the Bronfen family immigrants from the Russian Empire. They controlled it until 2000. So for 74 years, and then they, the company went out of, it actually went out of business. There is no more Seagram's. The brand is, al is alive, was sold off to various companies, Parnard, Ricard, um, Sazerac, and others. The distilleries, you know, those, and the bottling plants and all that's still in operation, but it was just, it's under other ownership. Fort Smith, Fort Smith, Arkansas, um, the main one in uh, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, and all that. But the company's gone, just like Schlitz. You might see Schlitz beer, but it is no longer a company. All right, anyway, in Bellows, so here's Seagram's, not a true company, and Bellows, not a true company. <laughs> I think the Bellows is going to get its behind kick today because I think Seagram's is a much better blended whiskey. It's 75% grain neutral spirits and it's 25% straight whiskey. What straight whiskey? Hey, look, I don't know what straight whiskey they're using in Seagram's. Probably you would imagine maybe uh, Bullet, Bullet, because it's one of their big brands, American whiskey, bourbon. Um, and then the Bellows. That is even more of a mystery. That's an 80-20 blend, so 80% grain neutral spirits. This is aged at least four years. Seagram's Seven Crown is aged at least four years. Neither one give an age, but this one gives an age statement, excuse me. It says at least four years. Seagram's no age statement. Which means it has to be at least four years old. In the United States, if a whiskey gives no age statement, the law says it has to be a minimum of four years old. Canada and Scotland and Ireland have different regulations. We're talking about the United States right now. 
United States of America. Okay, so we'll put this to the side. And then we'll pour the... I got to call the newspaper company after I get off of this because they delivered the paper. I heard them throw it. And by the time I got out there, I realized they were gone. The car was gone. They only delivered section C. Section D. Section D. <laughs> What's it called? Eat, play, live. It's like the living section. Um, they had two parts of that, but there was no section A, B, or C. I said, what? They don't have the main section, the metro, the New Orleans area, and the sports. Gee whiz, I'm going to have to call them back, and they probably take them hours delivered. If they deliver it at all, they might just say, I'm going to give you a credit. It's so irritating. I don't get a paper so I can get credits. Five viewers at this particular moment in time, just after 6 a.m. January 19th. 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, January 19, 2019. Leo Stringer says, I'm curious. I have a question, Mr. Ronald. You drank a lot. How is your liver? Oh, it's great. I don't drink a lot. I was telling my friend David that yesterday. Because he looked in the cabinet. I said, no, it's paste. It's paste. It's paste. There's a, there's a method to it. Now, the bellows is darker. I think this bellows. No, Seagram 7 Crown. Okay, see, I already have them mixed up. The Seagram 7 Crown is... Let me go back to this bigger screen here so I can make sure you're seeing it. The Seagram 7 Crown is a uh, amber, and this one is a lighter amber gold. Mm, okay, well, they both have pretty decent alcohol legs. Oh, okay, well, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, if I just glance at it, that's not going to throw off the, uh, you know, the color's not, I won't be able to detect which is which by virtue of the color just by glancing. I don't have to be too careful. But if I get, give a hard look at it, it would throw it off. So, got to watch it. I think that the bellows is too high. It's a 1994 bottle, okay? But I think it's got too much rye in it. It's a little harsh and not in, it's bold, but not in the right way. When I first tried it, I liked it. Then subsequent tastings, the enjoyment level drop, 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 drop. Seagram's, it always did taste good to me since I started trying it, which goes way back to when I first bought this bottle. <laughs> it's the only time I ever tried it when I bought this one single bottle which is from the year 2016. Yep. That's my experience with the old Seagram 7 Crown. He says, okay, I love your vids. Thank you, and I appreciate you watching. Here we go. My feeling is I'm going to get it on aroma only, but we'll, we'll find out at this particular moment in the time stream of the world, Anno Mundi. I don't know what year of the world it is. This smells like Seagram 7 Crown. Why is that? Smooth. Oh, so very smooth. In the nose. In the wood. That nice charred wood, it, but it's just a mild everything. Mild dried flowers, like dried flowers, and some fruitcake fruit, the gla glazed fruitcake fruit, you know, in the Mylar bags. Um, so smooth, also oh, very smooth. Now, here we go over here. Oh, no, 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 no. That's bellows. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Bellows has this unusual. Now, you see, okay, I was saying power of suggestion, and David was just influenced by me talking about Jim Beam. But this in the nose has that unusual Jim Beam cellar mold thing. Yeah, I know. It sounds mad, like madness to say it, but there's something about the Jim Beam whiskey that has like a, it's like 
my grandfather used to have this bomb shelter. It was like a man-made cellar in, on the side of a hill. And in Baton Rouge, there's a ridge that runs from Southern University all the way down. It's a bluff and it runs, oh, about 20 miles down the river. Then it peters out because the land gets so flat. But that bluff can be pretty high. When you get to Southern University, it's very high. You're overlooking the west bank of the river. And then it gets higher and higher by Natchez, Mississippi and Vicksburg, Vic, very high at Vicksburg. But, um, and I believe in Memphis, it's there too. But he built the bomb shelter in the side of the bluff in 1962 because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. He thought there was going to be a nuclear war. So I remember when they had beds down in there, but then nothing happened. So that just they had a toilet and everything, but that just died out. And then he became a storage area, which is still is a storage area. I don't know what's down in there now. M mud used to get down in there. I remember mud because we're raining and the water would wash in and then go down. And <laughs> but um, he used to store potatoes because it would stay cold all cool, even in the summer. So he would store potatoes down in there and, um, That smell, that moldy smell, it reminds me of the Jim Beam. And this reminds me of that smell. And then there's a strange spice here. I don't know what it is. It's got to be rye. I mean, what can? how can we explain this? Okay, so let's go with the, t I don't have to close my eyes now. I'm telling you, I'm going to look. I'm not even going to taste it. I know this is the Bellows. BCW, Bellows Club Whiskey. And this is Seagram Seven Crown. Don't let people tell you all American blended whiskeys taste the same because they do not. They absolutely do not. Now, whether they're good or not, that's for you to decide if you want to buy them or don't buy them. Buy them, don't buy them, doesn't matter. You know, I was thinking about just giving it up. I'm not going to buy any more blended American blended whiskeys because they're all. The, but these exercises are showing me they're not the same. And since they're so cheap. If, if I see them, I go look for them. But if I see them around, I buy them. Um, so, hey. Why are they cheaper than Canadian and Scotch and Irish blended? Well, they're not imported. They're made here. So you don't pay the import tax, <laughs> the shipping fee, right? They're probably on the same level when you get down to it. Quality level. It's just that we are here. They're here. There's no shipping costs. If you got Scotch, it's got to be shipped across the ocean. They have to pay tariffs. Canadian. Now we have the American Free Trade Act, or what's the new thing they signed? I can't even remember. Canada, America, Mexico. The CAM Act? Or I have to look that up. President Trump got it signed. But it's the same type thing. But didn't it, it's not really a free trade agreement because it's all heavily regulated and you have to pay import and export taxes. It's not a free trade agreement. It's a managed trade agreement. But that's the point there. It, you're getting something home produced, then it's going to probably be cheaper. Probably. Okay. Seven crown. Nectar. Like nectar out of a, out of a honeysuckle flower. Wood. There's definite wood char here. Or, yeah. Yeah, they're using used barrels. We all know that. They see it to me, it seems like it's aged longer than four years, though. I know that's the um, minimum. But I get a feeling that it's aged. It's 80 proof now. You know, it used to be 86 proof back in the 1930s when it came out. They still make Seagram's five star, but only in Canada, apparently. So Canadian blended whiskey. Now you can't get it here. I've never seen there. But Sazerac bought the five star. They bought Seagram's VO and 17 other whiskey brands from Diageo last month. 75% grain neutral spirits. And 25% straight whiskey. Oh, uh, well. A blend of distinctive character. He said, that's just a bunch of marketing. I like this plastic 
there's like a plastic coating of filigree on it. It's, it really feels nice. But I don't think it's just uh, marketing. It really is a blend of distinctive character because it has distinctive character. What I mean is it stands out. It's not just run of the mill American blended whiskey. You could sip it on its own merit. You know, you know what I'm saying? You could drink it on its own merits. Well, you might want to add ice. But uh, you say, well, I see that at every bar in the world. You're going to see it at every bar in the world and every store in the world, Secret Seven Crown. Well, I don't know about the world, but probably. Um, it's one of the top selling whiskeys in America. There's no doubt about that. What is it, number? Oh, in the top five. Mm -mm. A lighter body, not light body, but a lighter body. And a smooth finish, it doesn't, it lingers around a little, the wood, the wood kind of hangs around a little bit, a little wood. This has a lot of bourbon character, but without the heavy corn flavor, which some people do not like, the corn grits. I can live without the flavor, really. I don't. I eat enough grits in my life. I haven't had any lately, but I eat enough. All right. Grits. Done that. But this is just so, like, perfected. It's, like, perfect. The perfect American blend of whiskey, and I am entirely serious in that. Joe, Joe says, good morning, all. Canada Dry Hand says, uh, Lot 40 is a great Canadian whiskey. I wish we could get it down here. I've not seen it, heard of it. Jeff Knapp says, good morning. Waiting for the snow to arrive here in Ohio. We've got rain on the way here. It's about 65 degrees here. Oh, no, about 67. I'm wearing this long sleeve shirt. I'm kind of warm wearing it. I already went walking. I went walking at 548 because I figured the rain might start. That's when I realized the newspaper was missing the body of the main body of the paper. I was so irritated. I can call them in a few minutes. They'll be open. This thing has a peppery to taste. A little bit of that green wood. Green wood, you see? Ah, okay, I retract. I was kind of giving David the business like, Kind of making fun of him, but I got to retract that because it does have Jim Bean characteristics. You might say that's not really even good characteristics, though. Green wood and cellar mold. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it's a good characteristic. Jim Bean is a top selling brand, but a lot of people take exception to They don't like it. I, I tend to like it, but um, you could find fault with it. Yeah, I know they make uh, multiple, multiple exotic, high top shelf gourmet whiskeys, heritage collection, all that. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. So the base model, I'm talking about the base Jim Beam, you see. It's like the Ram 1500 truck I bought. You can get those down to the basic of the most basic. Roll up windows, you know what I mean? Or you can add a few options like I did on mine, the um, Chrome package and the uh, Power Equipment Group, which made it much nicer. But still, the one I have is a lower end V6 engine, which is very powerful for my needs. But you can go up the ladder to, psh, I mean, you can get. $60,000 vehicle. You can go from eight. From 19,537, which I paid brand new, 19,537, up to 60,000. And it's like that with Jim Beam and Jack Daniels. You can start at the base model, which is fine, but very basic, and then climb, climb, climb. Seagram's, well, you know, they don't really offer that anymore because the company no longer exists, right? You can get the Seagram's honey, the cinnamon, the Seven Crown, the VO. They used to make the VO Gold. It's still available because they got so much of a back stock. It may never go away. It may take 10 years to dissipate. But there really isn't anything else. That's it. That's your lineup. 
Now, do they from time to time put out a specialty? Yeah. Is it often? No. <laughs> How do those compare against Kessler? I think that the, the, the Kessler cannot rival the Secret Seven Crown, but it can come close. Kessler is one of your better American blended whiskeys. It's one of the better ones. It's It's got some approachableness to it. We can get Kessler here. But unfortunately, only in the big handle 1.75 milliliter. 1.75 liter, excuse me. You know, the 1.75 liter plastic jug bottle. I can get that at Dorgnax. And I think they sell it at Aquista Paces. But it's not popular around here. Kessler, I know it's a big blended product up north. They, everybody gets Kessler, Kessler, Kessler. And there's a Kessler uh, cinnamon or something like that. I saw that on the Jim Beam website. They don't show a photo, but it's there. They list Kessler cinnamon. I said, what? Or is it cherry flavor? I don't know. It's some flavored liqueur. I said, look at this. <laughs> How does the seven crown compare to the VO and the VO gold? Okay, hold on. Let me Let me try to deal with this oddity of all oddities, this this, uh, I was about to call it Burroughs, Bellows Club Whiskey. Woo. If you like mint, like a mint plant, not like I was saying, wintergreen, the, the lifesaver is wintergreen, but it's even more harsh than that. It's like a mint plant. My mother used to grow mint in the backyard, chewing on that. It's like, oh, it kind of really throws you in there, but you might like that. Huh. Well, the Seven Crown is American blended whiskey made in Indiana. Okay, so let's think about that. And then the uh, VO and the VO Gold, Seagram's VO and VO Gold, is coming from Canada. Up there in, I don't know, some northern Ontario somewhere, out in the boondocks, I think. So it's different. It's a different setup. Well, I think Seven Crown has more flavor than the VO. The VO is a little bit bland, but as they tell you on the website, it's created as a mixer. It is a made to be sipped alone, like the Cuddy Sark from Scotland. They tell you right down the website, this is created for mixing. It is not. They tell you right down the website, it is not made to sit there and sip by the fireplace and think about all the complex qualities. Now, if a company is telling you that, it doesn't make a lot of sense to get on the Internet and then say, I'm going to do a review of Cuddy Sark and then, then complain about how bland it is. Well, excuse me, the company's telling you it's created to be, to be that. The VO Gold probably has more character than the Seven Crown. But the youngest whiskey in VO Gold, the youngest whiskey is eight years. But I have a sneaky suspicion that Seven Crown is a six-year-old. I think it's six years. It just, it's got too much depth of flavor. You say, well, it could have coloring added. Maybe they added caramel to make it darker. That's allowed in American blended whiskey. That's allowed. So that could be that. I don't know. Maybe they did. Fine. I don't care. But they couldn't add that flavor. That flavor, yeah, I know they can use up to 2% blending sherry in any American blended whiskey. Blending sherry might get a, give it a little nutty flavor, whatever. But but I think the blending sherry just balances the flavor. You know what I mean? Like fills in little gaps that you might have. But that would probably be with a young whiskey. This one tastes like, I, I really think it's, it's I, you'll never find out. They won't tell you. Diageo ain't going to tell you. But I think it's six-year age. I really think it's a six-year age. It's kind of like a VSOP brandy compared to like a VS brandy. It doesn't taste young enough. It tastes, it doesn't taste young. It doesn't. I know six years is not long, long, long. You know what the minimum requirement is for bourbon in the United States? You know what the minimum age requirement is for bourbon in the United States? There is no minimum. Got you. No minimum. You say, oh, yeah, it's two years. No, that's straight bourbon. Different category. You know, there's two categories. Bourbon and straight bourbon. Straight bourbon has to be aged at least two years. Two years? Yeah. And they can't add coloring. Imagine how light it's going to be. 
unless they put it in an alligator char barrel. Alligator char is such it's the heaviest char, uh, so it could give it a deep color, but. Look at some of those bourbons carefully. It won't say straight bourbon. It'll say just bourbon. And the blended bourbons are a different animal also. It's got a little spiciness too. They must add, they must add a little rye whiskey to this Seagram's, but not too much, just a little. And maybe even wheat whiskey. It's got a softness that I think is coming from wheat whiskey. But it's great. It is really good. Uh, and about twelve dollars bottle. It's really good. I think it's it's a it's a classic. Classic. Now the bellows. Well, <laughs> ooh, that'll give you that. That'll give you the uh, goosebumps a little bit. This ain't no classic. But then who in the world ever thought Bellows was a classic? You ever heard anybody say Bellows is a classic? I bet you haven't. Well, of course, you may never have heard anybody say Seagram's Seven Crown was a classic. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but most everybody I've ever talked to, actually everyone I've ever talked to about whiskey has heard of VO. I mean Seven Crown. Everybody knows about Seagram's Seven Crown. My daddy said, yes, yeah, seven and seven. Who doesn't know about seven and seven? But say bellows, people say bellows. That's that thing you do to make the fireplace light up again. The bellows. So all I can say about it, it exists. All right. It's there. It's in play. Well, used to be the club whiskey. I've seen it. Not just here, seen it in a restaurant. So, I mean, if you're the kind of person like me, you can't, you just can't pass it up. Like if you see something strange, even though you, you figure it's not going to taste good, you still buy it because it's so unusual. If you're like me, you do that. You say, oh, that's too weird to pass up. I, I, I'm kind of like that. Like the more unusual it is, the more attractive it is, even though it ain't right. And you could, you could say, well, what? And I can't argue against what you're saying. You could say, oh, you ever, all you ever do is do videos for these obscure Canadian oddball whiskeys that nobody ever heard of that you found in some dark corner of some dark store in the dark area of a city. You know, the dingy part of town, the seedy part of town, the unsafe part of town, perhaps. And you want to do videos about it. Nobody ever heard of that stuff. But then you never did uh, Crown Royal. Like you don't do the premiere stuff, which would get way more views. You do all this idiosyncratic whiskey and beer and wine. Um, I am guilty of that. And if I was shooting for the viewpoint, if I was only worrying about views, 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 you know, I, I mean, <laughs> there it is. It's available, right? Crown Royal, all the big players, right? I'd be doing all your big vodkas, right? I mean, if I was all about views and getting subs and views, I'd be doing um, Tito's and all this stuff. I mean, it's there. You can make your channel big if you want. I mean, just go after the big time brands and you got it. Unless your reviews are so off the wall and bad, you may not have any viewership because you got some, I can't, there are people that do prominent brands, but you can't watch the videos. Just. 75% rambling on about inside jokes and then maybe 10% is the product. I, I just can't watch that. I might ramble on, but I try to ramble on, you know, focused on at least the, the product, right? <laughs> oh, well, uh, sorry, Bellows, you didn't measure up. But then you're not even a company, so. Of course, Seagram's isn't either, but Bellows is there. It exists in, it exists. I like I say, you, the next time you see American blended whiskey, it's going to be the Bellows, the current Bellows, just bleh, Bellows. I don't know what that's going to taste like. You heard that foghorn? 
right on the Mississippi River. A big ship. Well, they call them bo when they enter the river, they're called a boat. Boats on the river. This is legally, this is a legal thing. Out on the ocean in the Gulf of Mexico, they're called a ship. Once they enter the, the Mississippi River, now they're called a boat. You say, why? I don't know why. I just know they say boats on the river. There's a boat. Now, but you look at it, you say, ain't no boat. That's a ship from Ukraine, I mean, or Russia. I mean, it's a huge ocean ship. And you'll hear them all night long. Boom, boom. And you'll hear the chains clanking, bling, bling, bling. So when you live in an industrial area like this, I'm only a mile from the river. I don't think I'm a mile from the river. That's not accurate. I'm less than a mile from the river. If those houses weren't away, I could see the levee. What am I talking about? But uh, you just hear these ships all day long. And he just blew his horn. So uh, yeah, I'm like Mark Twain. I'm just like Mark Twain. Except for all the adventures. <laughs> I can drive up the river road, but I'm not gonna get on a barge with Big Jim or whatever his name was and float down the river. All right. Uh, uh, well, that's it. So tomorrow we get into the scotch. Ooh, scotch. Yeah, J&B, Just Arrhenian Brooks Rare. It's so rare you can buy it at practically every store. And uh, it's funny when they say rare. It's so rare you can get it everywhere. And then we're going to go up against Buchanan's, an even older brand. Oh, Buchanan's age. 12 years. Yes, 12 long years. Thanks for watching this video production. Now I'm going to call the newspaper.